Pour yourself a cold one. They strike them, huh? And listen to Russ Tucker break down the top college prospects on another tasty edition of The College Draft. Yeah, it's Daddy Soda time here on the College Draft Podcast presented by DraftKings. I'm Ross Tucker, former NFL offensive lineman, five teams, seven years. How many podcasts do I have? I have Fantasy Feast. That's one. Once a week, talking fantasy football with Joe Dolan, even money. That's two. Talking betting with Steve Fezzik. Ross Tucker football podcast, which is daily. That's three. Number four, I've got this one, the College Draft Podcast. And then Andrew Brandt does the fifth one, the Business of Sports Podcast, here on the Ross Tucker media platform. So I got five podcasts. Just got back home from Kansas City. Epic AFC Championship game. Cannot wait to get into some of the lessons that the great Emory Hunt and I learned from that game yesterday. From both those games, from a scouting perspective, Emory has been everywhere. He will be everywhere. You look like you're in a hotel room, Emory. Where are you now? I am in Mobile, Alabama, getting ready for the Reese's Senior Bowl this week. I just got off the plane uh, from the Shrine game, which was in Vegas, and also tacked on to my Pasadena trip at the NFL PA game. So um, this is the last leg of this week's All-Star event before I get back on for one more time uh, in February at the HBCU Legacy Bowl in, in New Orleans. That's awesome. Now, will you do the combine or no? I know you're yeah. not a big combine guy. I'll be there. I, and and I'm not a big combine guy in what it uh, does, you know, as far as like what we get to see in the media in terms of you know, all the running around and, and drills, stuff like that. I'm a big fan of the media access in terms of interviews because, you know, a lot of these guys we talked about all year, we scouted all year. And so now you get to talk with them face to face and get some really good stuff. Um, and they really do respect the fact that you know who they are and, and you've watched their games and they've watched this show. I've heard that a lot all this week, man. Hey, I seen you on Ross Tucker. I watched those podcasts on YouTube. I watched your YouTube highlights uh, of all the practices that you're at. I've been watching you for years. So it's been cool to, to hear those college students, student athletes say that. And so when they see you at the combine, it's just iced on the cake because they, they know that you're a legit source and legit uh, follow their game. That is cool, man. I love hearing that. Absolutely love hearing that. Uh, that's awesome. Of course, that is Emery Hunt. You need to check him out on social media at FBall Game Plan. He's Football Game Plan on YouTube. And then footballgameplan.com slash 2022 draft guide. The time is now. I mean, it's Right now, January 31st. What are we, about a month away, Emory? Yeah, uh, about a, a month away from what, the, the draft guide? Draft guide, yeah. Where yeah, I would say because I usually get it out before the combine, and, and it's rolling right along, man. And it, it's weird because you th- we already had the deadline of when you could declare, and I, I keep seeing, you know, scraggling, straggling tweets from players that I thought were in the transfer portal that have now posted – after the declaration date that they're entering the NFL draft, like, man, y'all, y'all got to stop, man. I, I can't wait to get back on the right track in terms of senior done instead of all of this this craziness that we're in right now. Yeah, you're right, because some of these guys, they don't have to declare because they've already played four years. Right. You know, that that's a great point. Um, really good point. So check out Emory on social media. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. We are at Ross Tucker Pod. All of our shows can be found at youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Let's get to some of the lessons from the championship round first. Uh, the games yesterday. You know, I'll throw a couple out. Um, one, I would say, is football intelligence. And I think that that's not talked about enough in the pre-draft process, not talk enough about by enough by fans. They look at highlights. They look at combine numbers. You know, I think one of the biggest separators between the good and the great when I was in the NFL was just feel for the game, football IQ. And I know, Emery, that Mahomes has a really good football IQ. But at the end of the first half, 
Throwing the ball to Tyree Kill in the flat with five seconds left, you cannot do that. The end of the game, taking a sack for a loss of like 20 yards and fumbling? You almost lost the game on a fumble when you're in chip shot field goal range to tie to go to overtime? I, Patrick Mahomes, this is like the most doubts I've ever had in him from a football IQ standpoint, Emery. It matters a lot. It, it really does. And we normally talk about it in terms of defense and coverage, right? Like linebackers not feeling underneath coverage. Or even if you look at uh, the later game when – you know, a guy is, you know, supposed to fall off. Are you playing a hard cover too? But there's no flat threat, so you can carry that route until you see a flat threat and drive on it. But you stay, you stay shallow. You let the guy go past you, and he's wide open for a touchdown. So, just football intelligence. We tend to talk about on defense more so. But you're right; those plays by Pat Mahomes, just I've never seen him play like that. Going back to Texas Tech, and you know, throughout his years in the NFL. I've never seen him just have just total collapse like that from a playmaking standpoint. Even on the 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 one sack, he had Kelsey open in the end zone. And that's a throw he makes 10 times out of 10. And he bypassed that throw, held on to the football, and then took the worst sack you could possibly take in that situation. The other thing that stood out to me was that, you know, no matter where I am or what I'm watching, there's always going to be a Ross Tucker sighting. <laughs> it was a Ross Tucker sighting on the sideline in that Chiefs game as we, they were coming out of break and they were coming out. They, you know, they did the stadium shot, the pan shot, then they started the z- sideline and zoomed back out. And it was like, man, look at Ross Tucker standing right there with the headset on and the scully. You know, it was just hilarious to see a Ross right there, where knowing where the cameras are uh, always. Oh, I work on that. I work on that. I, I try to get as much to because I know that's the only reason why my mom's watching <laughs> and other people. So I work on trying to get if I'm on sideline, I want as much TV time as possible. The weather in Kansas City was glorious. It's usually freezing. It was like I almost was worried I was gonna get sunburnt <laughs> in the first half on the on the Bengals sideline. So uh that's funny. Thank I'm glad you saw me. I got a lot of people that said they uh they saw me. A um, couple other ones that jump out to me. Um, you know, I guess the one I would say, roster building never ends. Mm-mm. Like watching Melvin Ingram make some plays for the Chiefs. Obviously, Von Miller and Odell Beckham Jr. for the Rams. And I guess the lesson there is not like a draft scouting lesson as much as a who you start the season with on your opening day roster is not necessarily who's got to be there at the end. And you can make your roster better during the season. Yeah, you really can. And 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 the biggest takeaway I have in that regard is that there's multiple ways to go about it. There's different ways you can get to California, so to speak, right? And you look at the Rams way. If you're going to go out and spend on stars – in, in terms of trading first-round picks for, for proven commodities and stars at the position, that's essentially what you want when you're drafting the first-round pick. You want the elite of the elite, and you want someone that's an instant playmaker on either side of the football. So you're technically getting that with a proven commodity that you know what he's going to do, like an Odell Beckham or uh, you know a, a Jalen Ramsey. So if you're going to go by that approach, then you better be able to scout the back end of the draft and nail late round picks and undrafted free agents. And you look at what they've done. They've done, they've done an, a great job of that. Jordan Fuller, late round pick. Troy Reader, start linebacker, undrafted free agent out of Delaware. You look at their offensive line. None of those are first round picks that they've drafted. So these are guys that they're bringing in, developing, and able to go. So, yeah, on its surface, like, man, they'll never have a first round pick ever again but if they're doing it that way and consistently are able to hit on the back end you can you can thrive like that if you look at the Bengals approach smaller scouting staff so they have to nail their picks and you look at all the picks they made this past draft getting McPherson in the fifth round getting Cam Sample when he did that's a key contributor you look at them hitting a home run with Jamar Chase rookie of the year so you you're able to if you're able to nail these picks with your scouting then you can go about building 
through the draft year after year. So that's why when people say, man, they, they don't they don't keep their guys. Well, you know, a part of that is because they trust their ability to draft and replace. And if you can do that, you'll keep one or two. Maybe you could pay the quarterback uh, or you'll pay the wide receiver. But you're getting guys consistently to replenish that role. We talk about this unit um, with Cincinnati like it's something brand new for them. No, you go back to Asiason, Tim McGee, and also Eddie Brown. Then they had James Brooks. They got free agent. They, they brought in Icky Woods. And now you look at uh, more recently Carson Palmer, Rudy Johnson, TJ Hushman's out. They drafted Chris Henry, Chad Ochocinco. Um, they had those guys, Corey Dillon, Jeff Blake, Carl Pickens. So they've been able to get guys and, and master the draft. And if you can do that, that's the cheapest way to keep your team competitive. So I see both ways to go about the draft. And, and so I love when I see teams have success in many different ways because we are always wanting to put this is one way you have to have success. Well, no, there's different ways to go about it. And when it all comes together, um, it shows you that there's no, you know, building a team is not a monolith. It's more about what works for you and if you can excel in that regard. You know, that is um, that is so funny that you just said that. Because my next one was more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> and – I think that's something that the Rams don't get enough credit for. David Edwards, fifth round. Joe Nopeloom, third round. Brian Allen, fourth round. Corbett on a trade from the Browns. Havenstein, second round. Higby, fourth round. You know, Cup, third round. Greg Gaines, fourth round. You mentioned Reader for agent. Nick Scott, who's been killing people, seventh <laughs> round. They, they just don't have much of a middle class. That's their deal, is that, like, they either have guys making a lot of money or the minimum. But their guys that make the minimum are good enough. They're starting in the Super Bowl. And, and that's the key. And, and if you look at, uh, uh, you know, Kansas City, look at how in one year they showed you they could rebuild an offensive line where you have some teams, it takes years for them to try to get to average offensive line play. So, okay, if we are going to rebuild this, how good are we at developing talent? So we have to get a great offensive line coach. We have to get a great receiver. You know, so you bring in guys like Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. They seem to master the art of taking receivers anywhere in the draft, and they know they can get the, the production. Chiefs just showed you this with the offensive line. Some teams specialize in that. The Saints specialize in – uh, running back depth and, and finding receivers and finding those playmakers that can catch the football. So you're right. If the Rams are continuing to do what they've done uh, on the back end of the draft, day two, day three, and, and and day four, we like to call it with undrafted free agents. Yeah, you could spin big with the first round picks and go get, you know, hired guns uh, of proven talent. And I also thought one, one other takeaway was that, you know, and I call it the Nick Anderson effect. Nick Anderson made all his free throws, all the threes you could want. He could score like crazy. But when he had to hit those four free throws against the Rockets, he missed. And that we saw on display against, uh, you know, the 49ers when uh, Tart dropped the interception. That's the that's the game. You know, a game comes down to three plays. And I thought that was the biggest one of the three that determined the outcome. So you got to make that play. The Mahomes play you brought up, he has to know to throw that ball away and get three. Uh, at the end, you have to be able to, to, you know, not take those sacks. You probably have a chance to score a touchdown and win the game. So making the plays that are there to be made, those are gimmies. A play doesn't care who makes it. It just wants to be made. And Tart's dropped interception was the key part of that game because they had the Rams on the ropes. No question. Uh, before we get into – some of the guys you saw at the NFL PA game and the Shrine Bowl, I do want to make sure everybody is getting their greens. Drink your greens, athletic greens. I started taking it because I was taking a multivitamin, but the multivitamin wasn't really doing much for gut health. Athletic greens is all over it. 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food-sourced superfoods, probiotics, 
and adaptogens. I don't even know if that's the right way to say that word. I think that sounds right. I don't know. Anyway, here's the deal, okay? There's a reason why everybody should take a multivitamin. It's important to choose one with high-quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. Athletic Greens costs less than $3 a day and has over 7,000 five-star reviews. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash draft. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash draft to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, Emery, let's start with the NFL PA game. I saw some of your tweets about it at F ball game plan. I know we had talked about him ahead of the game, but you want to talk about him again. So Akil Glass must have made an impression on you from Alabama A&M. Yeah, because when you saw him during the season, first of all, I, I know you've probably been out. You've been to the Rose Bowl, Ross? Never. Bro, listen, there's not a bad seat in the house. It's the perfect place to to watch a game and to, you know, to probably play a game. Uh, the way the field is laid out and, the, you know, how it sits with the, you know, the mountains behind you and all that stuff like that. Um, I don't know how UCLA hasn't won multiple national championships <laughs> at, at home. That, it's a beautiful facility um and so when i'm out there i've seen the kill glass a quill glass uh multiple times and he's listed at 6'3, 6'4, 215 on the alabama AM's roster but when he got out there i'm like he kind of thickened up and then the official measurements came in he measured him at six three and a half 230 so he's a big dude now he's not lean he, he put on the right weight and he was out there throwing with velocity touch he had a really good game. Uh, he had a touchdown pass, a deep, he showed a deep ball. He showed the ability to hit the intermediate route. I thought it was a, to be honest, a really good showing for him and the guy we talked about last week as well. And Cole Kelly, the quarterback from Southeastern Louisiana, I tweeted about like, man, if you talk about uh, traits, you know, height, weight, running ability, arm strength that can, you know, throw a ball through somebody's chest. That's Cole Kelly, and he also had a really good game. So watching those small college quarterbacks step in and, and show out was, was huge this past uh, week in um, Pasadena. So you had um, Ezard from Sam Houston State, Dixon from Nichols, McCutcheon from Montana State, who I saw three receivers in the game, Emery. What jumped out about those guys? Ezard. And I heard scouts talking about him um, while I was sitting in the stands. They they see him as someone, and you're going to hear this a lot this draft cycle, Debo Samuel type, you know, <laughs> can carry the football. He's he's instant offense, um, and he had a big game as well. Every time you look up, he's catching a deep ball, you know, over the middle of the field, down the sideline. He's just making play after play. They got him involved in the run game a little bit at practice. Um, so he was outstanding. Dixon was the star of the game, uh, just finding ways to get open deep down the field, uh, making tough contested catches. And, and McCutcheon was the same was the same way. You know, we saw him in the in the championship game. He had that that key drop, you know, on the sideline that I thought he could have hauled in, but he didn't have any drops this weekend. Uh, this past weekend in in Pasadena, you talk about someone that really was working these defensive backs out there from these power five conferences. So I thought this week was impressive for a while because he had a white helmet. He didn't have the gold helmet with the M on it or the Bobcat on it. So it took me a while to figure out that that wasn't Penn state. So I'm looking through the roster. I'm like, yo, who's the receiver number 89 from Penn state. <laughs> by the time I looked at it, I'm like, Oh, that's, that's homeboy from Montana state. He was cooking guys out there. Ross. That's awesome. Um, D tackle Eric Johnson from Missouri State and DB Gregory Jr. from Wachita Baptist. Yeah, Eric Johnson is um he got the call up to the senior bowl. That's how dominant he was. Like he was explosive off the ball. He was, you know, quick in the backfield. And I feel like every draft cycle, there's some player from Missouri State that just stands out and you're like, wow. 
he was unblockable that week, uh, this, this week in um, Pasadena, as well as Sam Williams. I tweeted out Sam Williams just looks like, you know, he's playing at three times faster speed uh, than everybody else, the edge rusher from Ole Miss, who also got called up to the Senior Bowl. So we'll see these guys this week in Mobile. And Gregory Jr., listen, Washita Baptist plays in the, the GAC, which is the Great American Conference. So that's Washita Baptist, that's Harding, um, that's uh, Henderson State, the Reddies. You know, so th there are some legit powerhouse D2 programs. And Junior checks the boxes of how you want the DBs to look physically, six feet, 200. But athletically, he can run with anybody. He can play corner or safety. He was locked step for step, man to man, with a lot of these high flying wide receivers like the the other call up to the senior bowl braylon sanders from old miss who was he was looking you know as smooth as smooth can be out there uh running routes and juniors is, is is making plays all across the field and it's like man this dude really is showing up from a division two level you know so he's playing up two levels and really was out there dominating and he's also another one that got the call up to the senior bowl before we get to the Shrine game, because I'm curious about those guys as well, I did want to mention, you know, it'll be February tomorrow. Guys, just myfrontpagestory.com. If you haven't done it yet, I've been talking about it the last couple of years. It is simply the best Valentine's Day gift ever. Your wife or significant other will be like, what is this when you give it to her and she's opening it? Because she won't even know that people can do this. She won't even know you can have a story written about somebody. It'll be the coolest most unique romantic gift she'll ever get. She will like cry tears of joy when she reads your quotes. Trust me, myfrontpagestory.com. All right, I saw you tweeting about this guy, Emery Garrett Prince from UAB, the tight end. Smooth, man, he's smooth. He, he's, uh, and, you know, I always ask these guys who, who are some of the players that they watch and, and who are they trying to take pieces of their game and add to, to theirs. Instantly, he was like Travis Kelsey. And I already had it in my mind, like, he kind of moves fluid like Kelsey. Um, his routes was, was natural. He was getting open consistently, plays with enthusiasm. And he was out there saying, like, man, this was my breakout year. And I kind of want to continue to build on that. And, and, you know, so he was amped for that opportunity. And he showed up and showed out uh, so far in practice. D. Lyman from – I knew there'd be a raging Cajun. <laughs> I knew it. From Louisiana, America's team, exactly. Taylor Humphrey. It, it, Ross, you ever seen? You ever been up close and seen uh, Reggie and Riley McKenzie? Yes. And just how big dudes they are, just naturally big dudes. Yes. That's this guy, Taylor Humph Humphreys. Bro, this dude is legit. He measured in at the – I got the official height and weight at the East-West Ryan Bowl, 6'6", 350. Bro, like – and – just naturally big. He's not a fat dude. He's just a big dude. He got quick feet, quick hands, and it, it was. I felt bad for Alec Lindstrom because you know Lindstrom. It, there was you know they they paired up. Uh, they separated the teams by scheme, so they put Humphrey on a on a three four defense, and so naturally he's head up over two hundred ninety pound at Alex Alec Lindstrom. And when I say he walked him back, he went from center to running back. That's how far back he walked him. And that's how consistent Humphrey was in the, you know, his ability to, you know, power rush. But he told me, it's like, listen, man, that's because I was asked to do that at UL. I can rush from, I can play any one of the techniques up front. Um, and I'm out here to show that I have some good pass rushing chops as well. So he was able to show that quickness off the snap and, and you know, really collapse as a one or a three, a big three. Uh, so I was impressed with what I saw from him so far. Three corners jumped out to you. Dallas Flowers, Pitt State, Jacoby Durant, South Carolina State, and Russ Yeast, Kansas State. Yeast, you recognize his dad who played receiver at Kentucky. I uh, learned fast Craig slot. Craig Yeast. Craig Yeast, exactly. Um, and Ro Russ Yeast uh, is someone that is just a – I love his ability, man. He's a gnat, you know, as someone that's just going to – you know, annoy the hell out you. He he can play inside as a slot. You could see him progressing, perhaps, to play safety in in some capacity. And he reminds me a lot of Quandary Diggs and and how he plays the game. Durant reminds you'll love this one, Ross. Durant reminds me so much, man, of 
Eric Allen. You know, he's a he's a shorter guy. He's five nine, about one eighty seven. Um, but man, when I talk about uh, you know just a nose for the football, he blitzes with a purpose coming off the edge. He's not afraid to challenge big receivers. He told me personally, straight up, said, "Man, I won't play on the outside. Like I'm not a nickel. I'm an outside guy. Yeah, I can play inside if they need me to and if they want me to. But I want to show I can play on the outside. You need that type of attitude, and he has that dog in him, and, and that's someone that he takes practice." Personally, in Dallas Flowers, we talked about preview before we got into the game. Um, he told me he was like, you know, I'm they, they questioned my speed. I'm like, bro, I, I don't even know how that's possible. You return kickoffs in college, if you return kickoffs, you fast. Now, if you return punts, you, you're more quick than fast. But so he was out there starting with the defense, and um, he's locked up step for step for some of these wide receivers from Miami and these other power five schools running step for step, playing good technique. and uh, finds the football and he's a big corner too, six one and weighed in at 190. So he looks the part, played the part, and had a really good week. Samari Torre, this is your guy, man. We talked about him a bunch this season. Bro, I, I ball tracking is huge for a receiver and understanding how to to slow the ball down with your eyes, you know, is a is a term that I use, but receivers understand that that's just about focus. He had one of the more impressive catches uh, this this week where he just kind of slowly stacked the, the DB and had to reach around and, and, and cradle the ball in outside of his frame, and it was just impressive. He didn't even break stride. He, he has that deceptive deep speed where he's going to cruise past people and uh, be a deep threat at the next level. And, and Deontay Knight, the defensive lineman from Western University up in – Ontario, London, Ontario. I've been there before. Beautiful campus. Uh, that's where I first had Duck. I, you know, this was in 2014. I went up there uh, to do their East West Bowl, their college all star game. And it was on the campus of Western University. They had a really good restaurant. I sat outside on the sidewalk and we had Duck. Like, so that was. <laughs> that was How was it? It was fantastic. I had never had Duck before. Growing up in New Orleans, you think I would have had Duck? Nope. Um, and so that was my first time having Duck in Canada. But with the with the Canadian kids, it usually takes them a day or two to get up to speed. I've seen this consistently. I saw this with um, uh, David Onyemata when he was at the East West Shrine Bowl. I saw it with uh, uh, Court, the the offensive lineman out of Alberta at the East West Shrine Bowl. But when they get it, they become dominant because again they start playing football late up there in Canada. So day one for night wasn't as impressive. But day two, and I even tweeted it out, man, he got all the blocks. In one-on-ones, he was dominating uh, team versus team. He was breaking through the line, making plays. Nine-on-seven, he was immovable. So, it, the, the you know, the getting acclimated to the strength and speed consistency that we played with in the States, it, took, it takes them a little while, but he was getting off to a good start. I'm excited to see how he plays in the game. So we'll talk a lot about the Senior Bowl next week. Uh, Emery, obviously you are there in Mobile right now. We'll find out what you think. Just in your opinion, what matters, what doesn't? Obviously, a lot of the talk already is about Kenny Pickett not getting his hand measurement. There's always some measurement that becomes the talking point every year. What's important to me is how these guys compete. And you want to see, you know, apples to apples, you know, quarterbacks throwing up amongst one another, wide receivers running against athletic dbs and dbs how they click and close or how they turn and run uh you just i I personally look at how these guys look uh, athletically because the tape tells you one thing but seeing it up close kind of gives you a good idea um so i'm i'm excited about that aspect and you you want to see who has picked up a little bit of weight you know um going into these all-star games since they hadn't played and who has dropped some weight one of the linemen for wisconsin at the shrine game He's down to 304. He played at 330 during the season. He looked small at 304. Uh, and so you always want to see whose body changed uh, from the last game they played to where we are now is, is body season uh, in All-Star Circuit. Check him out on social media at F-Ball Game Plan next week. Might even have a guest, but we'll definitely talk Senior Bowl next week and find out who made major moves that impress people at F ball game plan on Twitter, football game plan.com slash 2022 draft guide football game plan on YouTube. 
I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. We are at Ross Tucker Pod, and the keg is kicked. We're all tapped out. Thanks for listening to the College Draft Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Fantasy Feast, Even Money, and the Business of Sports. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, one 800 with it. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always, sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 